So far in this series, and incidentally, you can get all the messages uh, on podcast. You can find them again on YouTube and on various places. But so far, we've taken our weekly messages all from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 to 6, which we are going to read in a few moments together. We kicked off the series, you might have been here, on the evening where we launched the series with one baptism and 13, 14, 15 people were all baptized into Jesus Christ right here and we were all witnesses to that fantastic occasion. Then we went on into a message called One Faith. It's not different faith, it's one faith. Faith in Jesus Christ that saves you is the faith in Jesus Christ that will grow you. And if God has given you faith, he's given you faith not just for salvation, but for reigning in life. So that was a great message too. Then we went to One Lord and had a brilliant time celebrating some of the uniquenesses of Jesus Christ. I'll just remind you of a few. Nobody else's birth was endorsed by so many angelic appearances. Nobody else's baptism had a voice from heaven speak. Nobody else has been transfigured. None of you, as far as I'm aware, have had Moses or Elijah appear in your quiet time. But in Jesus' quiet time, they turned up and the Father endorses again. None of us, as valued and loved we are, can say we are the way, the truth, and the life. But Jesus Christ was able to say he was the way, the truth, and the life. So we looked at one Lord. Then last Sunday night, we had a huge Destiny United party uh, across in our larger Southside building where Sir Brian Sutter came along and brought a message again around the theme of the power of one. So we're continuing in that series tonight and under this title, The Power of One, One Spirit. Now to set this message up for you, I'm going to show you a little movie clip in a moment. Some of you might need to buckle your seatbelts, embrace yourselves. Uh, I want to show you a clip from a recent movie that has smashed box office records all around the world. It's an interesting movie because this is the fourth time this movie has been made. In 1937, uh, Take my word for it, I wasn't there either. In 1937, it was made. And then in 1956, it was remade, starring the beautiful Judy Garland and wonderful English actor James Mason. Uh, fast forward into the 70s, it was made again, this time starring rock star and actor Chris Christopherson and Barbara Streisand, legendary Las Vegas vocalist and voice. And then just more recently, it was made again. But the whole production was an interesting journey because for five years, they've been trying to remake this movie. They could never quite find the right funders. They could never quite find the moment where stars could bring their diaries together. And so well-known faces and names like Will Smith, Tom Cruise, Beyonce, Am I saying any names you know? Yes. Beyonce, Will Smith, Tom Cruise, one or two others were all scheduled at different points to play key roles in this movie, but never quite got there. And eventually an actor who's an outstanding actor, but perhaps not the caliber of those guys in terms of Hollywood box office income, called Bradley Cooper, took the lead role in the movie. As the movie journey progressed, he took an opportunity to make his directorial debut as well, and he became the director of the movie as well as the main male lead in the movie, and he insisted on an untried actress playing the female lead, a young lady you know her as Lady Gaga. In the movie, she's called Ali Main, uh, a beautiful part, and the movie is, of course, a Star is Born. The movie to date has grossed $431 million at the box office, so just shy of our Make It In March goal, but nevertheless, a significant movie. But the soundtrack from the movie is really the element of it which has gripped people's hearts. So far, the soundtrack's only been released for 22 weeks, has sold four million copies, has been number one in 15 countries and has been in the UK top 10 albums every week since its release. 
And the lead single from the soundtrack is the song I'm going to play you called Shallow. This single was written by Lady Gaga with the help of famous DJ and producer Mark Ronson. And it went to number one in numerous countries, including here in the UK and in the US. In fact, in the US, in its first week, it sold, not streamed, not downloaded, not stolen, sold 600,000 copies in its first week. The song resonates with people's hearts because I don't want to give you too many spoilers about the movie, but you would need your handkerchiefs if you do go home to watch it, and you would need parental consent if you're under the age of 15. So to set up this message, one spirit, let's watch this clip of this performance, and let me set it up a little further for you, because I'm into it now, that in the movie, he is a well-established rock star. He's at the top of his game. He's the headliner at the festivals, She's a struggling waitress. She's an aspiring performer, but she's beginning to feel like her big moment won't come. Her arrival onto the scene won't happen. And so she's consenting herself to waitressing part-time and performing part-time in little-known clubs and late-night slots, wherever she can find them, to put food on the table. Well, he has a bit of an issue in the movie. As well as being a rock superstar sex god, he's also an alcoholic. And so after his show, he just goes wandering the streets looking for lights that are still on and bars that are still open to feed his habit. And he walks in in her performing. Well, he falls in love twice in the movie. He falls in love with her talent. And then as they build a friendship, which leads into a relationship, they, I mean, you don't need to watch it now, do you? <laughs> uh, 45 minutes into the message, I'm still in the introduction. I'm saving you $3.99. Say thank you. He falls in love with her talent, and then he falls in love with her gift. And as their friendship blossoms into a romance, they write a song together. But she's not ready to sing the song with him anywhere except in private places. And then this moment happens, and you see her go from shy, unsure, but certainly talented young waitress to rock superstar. Watch this clip. Shallow. Dictionary definition. Lacking depth. Not deep. Superficial. The song popularity undoubtedly linked to the storyline of the movie also resonates with the cries of the hearts in millions of people today. Did you catch the lyrics? Tell me something, girl. Are you happy in this modern world? Or do you need more? Is there something else you're searching for? I'm falling. In all the good times, I find myself longing for change. And in the bad times, I fear myself. Her response is just as heart-wrenching. Tell me something, boy. Aren't you tired trying to fill that void? Shallow. There's an antidote but before we have an antidote, we must diagnose an issue this evening. There is an aching in every human heart. Uh, screams of, I don't have everything I need to make me happy. Screams of, I have everything I ever wanted, but I'm still not fulfilled. Even in the midst of success, most if not all are plagued by recurring feelings of dread or fear or worry or live life as fast as possible so they don't have to stop and acknowledge that they feel like they are falling. Many battle hidden addictions to over-the-counter medicines. Many struggle against secret compulsions and habits. The bottle of wine every night. The sleeping tablets even in good times, we find ourselves longing for change. And in the bad times, we fear ourselves or the thoughts and feelings that we carry. Even believers are not immune. Amen. But there is an antidote. Yeah. Stand with me again, and we will read our verses. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 through 6. NASB version tonight. So we'll read them all together. Hopefully, they're up on the screen behind me. Are they there? They are there. Everybody go. Therefore I, 
the prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, showing tolerance for one another in love, being diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as also you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Let's pray then as you're standing. Father, by your Holy Spirit, we welcome and acknowledge your presence in this room and on this message and across that live stream. Lord, whenever we're hearing this message, whatever we're listening to it, we ask you to minister to our hearts this evening by the power of your one Spirit. Lord, we ask you for salvation. We ask you for hope. We ask you for strength. We ask you for energy. We ask you for passion. We ask you for forgiveness. We ask you for fire. All in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who ministers amongst us by one spirit. Amen. Give God a little round of applause by way of shaking off that depressing clip. And we'll move on. One spirit. His name is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the forgotten God. He's mentioned in the Old Testament more than 90 times, but when we come to the even shorter New Testament, he's mentioned more than 260 times, often referred by up to 40 different names or titles. Now let's start this next part of this message with a fact. If you're a born-again believer tonight, God gives you, offers you his Holy Spirit who will fill us, come to live in our hearts, to totally empower and transform our lives. That is God's expectation when his Holy Spirit connects with your spirit. Our inner lives and our external worlds are never the same again once we are being led by the one spirit. The problems I mentioned earlier and those highlighted in the movie, they are soul problems. They're emotional problems. They are body problems. And God's antidote to all of them is life by his spirit. You are a spirit being having a human experience, not a human who has spiritual experiences. But when God wants to touch you, he wants to touch you body, soul, and spirit and bring you into complete wholeness, fulfillment, and peace in your life by his one spirit. I've got seven to eight points tonight. <laughs> but for the sake of time, I'll miss one and we'll just look at 77 of them. Point number one, the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit of the gospel story. What do you do when your whole life is built around achieving something and then when you achieve it, you get there only to find that that success doesn't deliver what it promised? That's the story of Jackson Maine in the movie. Everything he's ever aspired to is now his reality and it's not enough. We are separated from God from birth. We have been separated from God since Adam, but not only from God in the sense of relationship, from the life he wants to offer us and the kingdom that he rules and reigns in. Thank God that the Holy Spirit deemed a time appropriate for the Father to send his son Jesus and Jesus' life, death, and resurrection wins for us an invitation that's it. You have been afforded an invitation to reconcile with God. God is under no obligation to bring you fulfillment, peace, restoration, wholeness, healing, success, prosperity, and blessing. All the things we hope and aspire for and are superstitious about until you've reconciled to him through his son, Jesus Christ. 
And if you're not reconciled to God through his son Jesus tonight, I wish you well in your life, but your life will count for nothing unless you take a moment where you make a stand for him. And your life might achieve all of its goals or you might miss many of them. And either way, you will lie awake at night knowing that there was something more and it evaded you. But it wasn't a longer holiday and it wasn't a faster car and it wasn't more bedrooms and it wasn't further holidays. It was a relationship with God through his son. And it wasn't a stronger drink and it wasn't a more potent pill and it wasn't a different circle of friends. It was connection with God. Unbroken fellowship with his son. Interestingly enough, before Jesus ascended back into heaven, after his resurrection, he started wandering around telling anybody that was listening, it's better that I go. Try and comprehend that. You spent three years with Jesus and now he's leaving. What can possibly be better than that? Well, here's what he says. John chapter 16, verse 7. This is Jesus speaking. But I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him, the Holy Spirit, to you, to be in close fellowship with you. You see, the only barrier between you and God now is the barrier you put there. The only distance between you and God now is the distance that you won't close. You can receive God's Holy Spirit into your life anytime you want to. John chapter 1 verse 12 makes it clear. As many as received him, To them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. So here comes Jesus onto the scene modeling a life that we cannot imitate. And he says things like, imitate me. You ever done that to your kids? You know they can't do it. So you go, go on, do it. And then they look up to you, dad, I can't do that. I can't do a dive bomb into the pool the way you do it. And you know they can't do it. They know you can't, but I can still remember. Perhaps he's watching online tonight. But I can still remember all those fun times I had saying to my son, come on, I'll give you a race. All those fun times I had saying, go on, I'll give you a wee start. And then I can still remember the first night I had to pretend I'd let him win, but he'd won on his own. (laughs) I gave you a wee start there, son. But there is a promise. Jesus presents this life not to torment you with power that he has but is not available to you, but to present you with a life-living power that can bring you through life under the guidance of one spirit into all that God has got for you. And he seals it with a promise. So point number one is the gospel. Point number two is the promise. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit, that one Spirit, has come upon you. That little word there, power, is the Greek word dunamis. It's where we get our English word dynamite. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen a cartoon where they use dynamite to blow each other. Don't try this at home, by the way. I don't know if you've ever watched a movie where they've broken open a bank safe or unblocked a blocked tunnel by using dynamite, but there is mess wherever there is dynamite. There is power wherever there is dynamite. There is noise wherever there is dynamite. What am I saying tonight? When you've received power, you will know. There will be explosions of Holy Ghost proportions. When was the last time there was an eruption around your life of Holy Ghost power? It's as if the church has been given a gun by which to assassinate the devil, but we've put a silencer on it and pointed it to our own heads. That God promises us power. I'll just progress on tonight. He's also given us not only the gospel, not only the promise, but a guarantee. Luke chapter 11, verse 13. If you then, Barry, being evil... 
know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? Let's say that together. That's good. How much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? James said it like this. You don't have because you don't ask. Nudge your neighbor and just ask them, have you asked for dynamis power? Is it too good to be true? If anybody else was making the claim except God, it would probably be too good to be true. If anybody else was offering this, it would probably be a charlatan, it would probably be a snake oil salesman. But this promise and this guarantee doesn't come from some misguided money racketeering uh, fake evangelist. It comes from the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the High King of Heaven, and the God of all the earth. There's a promise and a guarantee. And when he comes, he produces something and he brings something. He produces the kind of fruit that you've been aspiring to produce on your own strength your whole life. And he brings all of the gifts necessary for you to reach every level of living that God has designed you to live in. So what have I said so far? We're falling. We're frustrated because it's shallow. But there's a depth in the gospel that is a thirst-quenching depth. It's not shallow. There's a promise of dynamite power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And there's a guarantee that the Father will give his Holy Spirit to those who ask him. And then he produces something and he gives us something to help us live the life we're designed to live. So if I had seven points tonight, this would be number four. The fruit. Galatians chapter five, verse 22 and 23 tonight, since we've got a bit of time. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Let's stop there and do a general knowledge quiz. Who produces this kind of fruit? Thank you. Just checking, you're not trying to produce it on your own. The Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit as you strive, as you stress, as you strain, as you try, as you bind yourself to promises you can't keep, as you try and fast two times a week, as you try and tithe 25%, as you promise to get up at five in the morning and pray on bare floorboards. The Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. See, I know you know it, but we need to make sure tonight that you know that you know it. It's not willpower that produces change. It's the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's not determination that transforms your temperament. It's the Holy Spirit. Stop trying to change and just accept, I am changed. I am different. I am not my own. What's this verse saying? If you've got the infilling, you've got the fruit. You have it. You're walking in it. You're producing in it. You just haven't noticed it. You've been try so busy trying to produce it that you haven't been picking and eating it. And then the gifts. Man, I'm flying through this message. I might have to tell a joke to fill the time. <laughs> there was two, no. The gifts. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 to 11. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of ministries and the same Lord. There are varieties of effects, but the same God who works all things in all persons. No Christian superstars. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. 
For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, and to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, and to another the effecting of miracles, and to another prophecy, and to another the distinguishing of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues, but one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually just as he wills. Just as he wills. Do you remember the guarantee? If you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? In other words, I'm willing. I am willing to give you the gifts just as I will. Sometimes people lose slight focus at this point. They say, yeah, yeah, I believe that. I'm baptized in the Holy Spirit. I speak in tongues and I've got the gift of knowledge. Sometimes people say, yeah, I get that. I understand that. I'm baptized in the Holy Spirit and I have the gift of effecting miracles. Many Christians who are not baptized in the Holy Spirit usually talk about the easier gifts to display. I've got discernment of spirits. She's a badgin. <laughs> He's not to be trusted. That's the gift of suspicion. The gift of discernment is it seems good to the Holy Spirit and to us. And from time to time, you do get a little check in your spirit about some nasty little so-and-so who's not where they should be, but you can disciple them into what God has got for them. Then another says, yeah, I understand that because I just seem to have this gift of faith. But if this scripture is in the Bible, the gift you get is not the gifts. The gift you get is the Holy Spirit. You get his wisdom if you've got him. If you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, you get his knowledge, his faith, his healing power, his miracle working, his gift of prophecy, his discernment, his spiritual language, and his interpretation. The gift you get is the Holy Spirit and the gift he operates through your life is the gift that you need depending on the situation you're facing. You don't need the working of miracles when you need discernment. You don't need the word of knowledge when you need the word of wisdom. You don't need healing if you're walking in divine health, but I bet you'll need faith to stay there. And the gift that he gives is the Holy Spirit. One Spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, one Father over all. But there is no diversity of God's personality. He's one. One Father, one Son, one Holy Spirit. So how do we move on? Well, you might have experienced the baptism in the Holy Spirit. But the one spirit longs to fulfill you and keep filling you to overflowing constantly. So if you've never had the baptism in the Holy Spirit, you need to experience that this evening. And there will be a team here who will pray for that to happen as you come forward in faith. But if you have been baptized by the Holy Spirit, if you know what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit, then the question for you is a different one. Are you walking in it? Is dunamis power shattering barriers? Is dunamis power tearing down strongholds? Is dunamis power unlocking bondages and chains? Is dunamis power producing fruit in your life? You see, if you've got the infilling, you've got the fruit. If you've got the infilling, you've got the gift. So final point, and this is where we will labor. Ask for the gift. Receive it by faith. Or walk in the good of the gift you already have. His fruit produced in you by faith means life is not shallow. His gifts displayed through you by faith means life is not superficial. There is no limit to how deep you can go 
if you're willing to be led by the one Spirit. Do you know what I find, my friends? The longer we're Christians, the more in our minds Jesus begins to look like us instead of us beginning to look like him. So the God that I want coincidentally wants the things that I want. Well, I quite like her. What's that? Oh, confirmation from that. Well, what a coincidence. But discernment, wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, discernment, speaking in tongues will keep you out of the jail of poor decisions. You need the Holy Spirit to butter your toast. You need the Holy Spirit to keep that speedometer the right side of 70. Nobody's impressed that you can drive faster than the angels are willing to fly. (laughs) But when you have the Spirit, you have the fruit. It's not that you are more patient. It's that He's patient through you. It's not that you are more loving. It's that He loves people through you. Your flesh is just as rotten as it was the day before your baptism. But when you have the infilling of the Holy Spirit, you don't walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. And that's the difference between a superficial life and a deep life, between an inconsequential life and a shallow life. It's what do you walk in today, not what did you experience 10 years ago? What did you hear about 15 years ago? What did you manifest some time ago? It's what do you believe God is producing in you and giving away through you today? The one spirit is not dead just because you've became mature. He's not retired just because you're no longer in chaos. So what will you do with his spirit? You have a choice. You can choose to ignore him and live like it's your strength that produces fruit or you can walk in his power, walk in his strength. Craig, how do I do that? By faith. The same faith that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Do you understand that? There was no categories of faith, no sections of faith, no faith for revival in the UK, but no faith for revival in Argentina. There's faith for healings in France, but there's no faith for healings in Scotland. It's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one spirit, one God over all. God isn't working in sections of the planet. God created one planet and he's working in the whole planet. So what will you do? How will you play your part? How will you find your place? You must take the faith that saved you and apply it to your everyday life and live in the good of it. From the minute Jesus died, you were healed. From the minute Jesus was resurrected, you were delivered. From the minute those nails were put in his hands and his feet, you were forgiven. Will you walk in it? Or will you try and pay a debt that's been paid? You don't have to. I wonder if you want to stand with me this evening. Well, that wasn't really our request. Do it. (laughs) The Bible says, where two or three are gathered, God is in their midst. Please don't misquote that verse to mean when there's not very many people at the prayer meeting. Comfort the believers with this one. If you are here, and then for God is here, if God is here, there's dynamis here. If there's dynamis here, your healing is here. Your deliverance is here. Your direction is here. Your guidance is here. Your strength is here. The wisdom you need is here. The peace you aspire to is here. I can lead you to the water, but you have to take a drink. Come on up, guys. Of course, it all starts with being 100% sure in your heart that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. There can be no infilling until there's been a kneeling, 
a surrender in your heart that you, it's his ways, not your ways. Jesus Christ lived and died and rose again so that not one person could live separated from him. In fact, the Bible says the Father is willing that none should perish. So if the Father is willing to make your salvation certain, are you willing to work with the Father to receive that assurance? Have you ever trusted God as your Lord and Savior? I remember when I was first a new Christian, every time there was an opportunity, I put my hand up just in case. Maybe tonight's the, night, the last time you need to just make sure. Or maybe tonight's the night you need to do it for the first time. And then we're going to worship. And then the team are going to minister to you here. Do you need a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit? He's here. Listen, there is not one person on the planet that can say, I asked the Holy Spirit to fill me and he said no. You're not ready yet. You're not good enough yet. You're not tall enough yet. You're not short enough yet. You don't pray enough yet. You don't read the Bible enough yet. To as many as received him, he gave. So I wonder if I was to offer to pray tonight for anybody that needs to make sure of their eternal salvation. Make sure you go to heaven when you die. You're a long time on the other side of this life. Make sure that you leave this place knowing the joy of God's forgiveness and the peace of his salvation I would love to pray for you. Oh, I get excited at this point because God answers this prayer every week. Every week, somebody leaves the building with a glow that wasn't there when they came in, with a spring in their step that wasn't there when they came in. God wants to give you the gift of salvation or the assurance of salvation if you've struggled with certainty. I only need to pray the prayer if somebody needs it. I believe God is saying somebody needs it. So before I pray the prayer, who is it for? Now because you're all standing, this is what I'd like you to do. I don't want to say a prayer that no one needs. So if you need it, well before I ask you who needs it, close your eyes and just bow your heads. And if you're sure in your heart you don't need it, please pray with me right now that those that do need it will be able to receive it. Are you sure? There's a gentleman with his hand up already. Are you asking for this prayer, sir? You keep your hand up high. Is there another then? You just put your hand up with us. I've got mine up. You need to put yours up. You put it up too. Go on. Put it up nice and high so I can see you wherever you are in the room. And I promise you God will answer this prayer. I would have came for one, but there might be another. Is there anybody else? There's another here. Just needs to make sure. Fantastic. Very brave. So now we have two. Is there a third in the room? Someone wrestling? Go on, just put your hand up. It's a small price to pay for peace. Is there a third? Last opportunity. If you need this prayer, put your hand up high. Don't let anything stop you. Father, it's a privilege and an honor to pray for this lady and for this man. Lord, I know you know them. I know you've known them since the day that they were born. Even before they were born, you knew about them. Father, tonight they've come into your house to respond to an invitation to live for you, to serve you, to love you and to enjoy you. But the ability to do that is a gift from you. So I pray tonight, Lord, they would know the assurance of your salvation, the certainty of your forgiveness, and your peace in their lives. Lord, whatever bondages have hindered them or slowed them down, break them off their lives in the name of Jesus. Restore their minds. Heal their wounded emotions. Lord, give them a spring and a joy in their spirit as you bring them back to life tonight for your glory. Well, God is good. Someday in the room this evening, you have been bothered by asthma. I can see God healing you this evening. Someday in this room tonight, you've been considering a divorce. 
God wants to talk to you about that situation tonight. He wants to direct you in that situation tonight. As we worship, Barry and Kathy will come up and close the meeting. If you need God to move in your life, come forward and talk to one of the team. You'll never regret it, but remember, there's one spirit. He's given you the gospel. He's given you a promise. He's given you a guarantee. He's given you his gift. He'll produce his fruit. Go and walk in it. You'll never regret it. Amen.